Hello. So today I'm going to be going live with Taylor, uh, also known as TD Nutrition on Instagram. And she also has a contri contribution to the Raw Vegan Bundle. And she has a really awesome book called The Protein Myth. And I'm really excited to talk to her about her ebook and ask her some questions about protein and vegan protein. Hi, Taylor. Just gonna accept her in the live. How are you doing? Hi. Hi, good. Yeah. Just gonna adjust this. Well, it's nice to like meet you and connect. So. Hi awesome. again. You too. Oh, thank you. Thank You're you. so beautiful. <laughs> so I'm really, I'm really excited to chat with you today because I, you know, I've had my fair share of using protein powders, making sure that even on a vegan diet that, you know, that I'm eating enough protein. And so anyways, I first, first of all, I'd like okay. to introduce you to my audience. And so maybe you could just share a little bit about you, who you are, and uh, how you came across veganism or, or you know, just the, the, the diet so, the lifestyle. Um, I, uh, so I have a master's in applied nutrition. Um, and that kind of like really pushed me and it was holistic based. So that pushed me into holistic nutrition. Obviously, that wasn't necessarily like being vegan. But prior to starting my master's program, um, like about a month before I was diagnosed with Lyme disease, I had been sick for like over a year at that point. And so I went through my master's program having Lyme disease and figuring out, okay, like, can I, you know, address my Lyme disease through nutrition without having to rely on antibiotics and stuff, because I did do the antibiotic route for 10 months. And it just ruined my gut health and everything. And prior to getting Lyme disease, I was super into fitness, um, protein shakes, pre-workouts, all that good stuff. Um, and then I got Lyme disease. I couldn't really work out like I wanted to. Um, and then I started getting better um, because I was addressing my nutrition. And part of that for me was cutting out meat. Um, and I just relied heavily on mostly fruits and vegetables. Um, and it just made such a difference. And then when I was feeling ready to work out again, I was doing pre-workout and I was like, why am I doing this? This is going to undo everything that I've been doing. So I need to stop that. And, and I had kind of let go of the protein stuff at that point, but I was still kind of holding on to the pre-workout aspect that is, you know, kind of like workout culture, you know, like, especially, I, have, I mean, have you yeah. done the pre-workout thing? I feel like. I haven't, but I was okay. taking BCAAs and uh, yeah. And, you know, and just like, you know, I felt like it was a bit of a crutch that yeah, I had exactly, to let go exactly. of. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so now that i am got my Lyme disease into remission, I um, am back to working out like I want to. And it's very cool to see myself get stronger without doing all of the high protein and protein shake stuff that I used to do. Um, and so, yeah, it's something that I felt like I wanted to share because that is the million dollar question. Everyone asks people who are vegan or plant-based, like, where is your protein coming from? So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. That's awesome. So I know that, um, like for me also, like I, one of the things that I got from eating plant-based and, and turning to this lifestyle was being able to cleanse my body of my eczema as well. And so I, I think that you shared that you've also experienced that a little bit, yes. like some skin issues. Yeah. Skin um, and conditions. so that kind of, because one of the things that makes Lyme disease worse is heavy metals and heavy metals can also contribute to psoriasis and eczema. And so I did, I struggled heavily with my skin. Um, and also the state of your digestion can mm -hmm. contribute to eczema and things like that. So, um, yeah, um, mm -hmm. the protein was not helping my, my skin issues. And that was one of the things that was like, why is this happening when I was <laughs> sick and I didn't have a diagnosis? I had this awful rash on my arms and legs and stuff. So, yeah. So you didn't really know? or at, So at that point, like, did you know that it was, um, I don't know, how was that your was journey kind of like figuring out that it was, you know, that plant, yeah, like that plant-based Food um, was so it help you. was honestly kind of more like a gut instinct. Like I was learning in my program, all of the, mm -hmm. you know, benefits of fruit. And we were actually, you know, being taught not to demonize fruit sugar, which that was an eye opener for me because for so long, I didn't really eat fruit. 
like I ate a little bit. I, the most fruit I would have was maybe one apple in the day. And now like, I can't even imagine that. Um, and so that was the eye opener. And so then that also kind of pushed me to when we had assignments and things, I really started going out and finding resources that was very much like fruit forward um, and, and more plant based forward, because obviously my program had both, you know, plant based perspective, and meat eating perspective, which I appreciated. I mean, it helps now having both. But um, but yeah, it was really the fruit information that I was like, wait a minute, okay, so I don't need to fear it anymore. And, um, and then that's when I kind of like just jumped into it all on my own as well. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I'm like, I, you know, there's so many different things that I want to do in different paths that I want to like, yeah. you know, experience. And I think, yeah, like somebody is saying that they're going to holistic uh, nutrition school in the fall. And so like, I was considering going to, uh, you know, going to learn more about it just to just to educate myself. And uh, yeah, so that's really awesome. So what a what does like a typical day of all right look like um, so <laughs> normally i get up and i hydrate first thing so you know i'll have water um and then i'll have a green juice um and then my breakfast will vary from a smoothie to having melons are in season right now so i've been doing a lot of melon for breakfast honeydew cantaloupe um the little like french mm -hmm. melons i don't know if you've seen those but there's so many varieties of melons um some watermelon um and then you know maybe i'll do mango or papaya um so it kind of varies. It also varies on my work schedule. If I have morning clients, I'll usually just make a smoothie and sit down with a client because I can just drink that while I'm while I'm talking versus trying to eat. Um, and then usually I'll work out at some mm -hmm. point in the morning if I have a gap in clients. Um, and then I'll drink a coconut water. Um, and then a couple hours after that, I'll have lunch, which for me, lunch is usually always a smoothie because at that point, I'm usually always seeing clients over like the lunch hours. So I usually always do a smoothie. Um, it's convenient. Okay. Um, and then I'll have some time of snack in the afternoon, maybe a couple of dates, maybe some fruit, maybe a juice it varies depending on the day, depending on the fruit that's in season as well. Um, and then for dinner, um, that also varies. It can be a salad. It might be some type of zucchini noodle with a sauce. Um, you know, I do still do some cooked food for dinner, so I might do steamed potatoes with a sauce. Um, sometimes I'll do like raw tacos or a veggie burger. Um, I really kind of just base it off of how I'm feeling for dinner. I'll have a week where all my dinners are raw, and then I'll have weeks where, you know, I was having like steamed potatoes every day for dinner. Um, typically in the colder months, I do lean more on steamed potatoes. I think kind of a lot of people tend to do that. Um, and then in the warmer months, I am more, you know, more closer to being 100% raw, so okay yeah that's awesome that's you know that's my daily kind of uh okay, goal awesome. of like what i how i eat as well somebody's asking if you buy fruit daily hi richard uh i have i have a hard time maintaining fresh fruit for the expiry yeah. really fast um, um yeah. and i mean you probably have some insight on this too um but I mean, I definitely buy fruit yeah. multiple times a week, not every day, probably two to three times a week. Um, I have a CSA subscription. So that stands for Community mm -hmm. Supported Agriculture. So it's kind of like farmer's market. Um, and, oh, wow. and every Monday, so Monday evenings, I get my delivery. Um, and so I get a lot of produce through that. Um, and most of it will last like a week if I don't, if I haven't already finished it, a lot of it will last usually a week. Um, but then if I'm getting stuff three times throughout the week, everything's kind of staggered. So then it's like, I always have stuff that needs to be eaten now, stuff that's good for a few more days. So you kind of got to get a system down. I've realized. Is that, is that mm -hmm. what you found too? <laughs> totally. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's definitely like I've learned like, okay, if I I'm not stocked up and like, and if I know I still have fruit there, you know, like it's good to know but then if I'm not stocked up for after that you know like I have to keep preparing and just you know and, and that's part of the lifestyle just to be you know create that environment for myself so that yeah. I can succeed <laughs> um and so okay so also kind of on the protein uh topic uh so you said that for you know while you were kind of detoxing your body you weren't really uh you know, you kind of now you're getting back into your fitness routine. What does your kind of like physical activity look like now? And, um, and how has, you know, your diet contributed okay. to, to that? Uh, so now my fitness routine is yeah. definitely 
balance. Like I would say that I, I do much more cross training before it was like, I was all in on something, whether it was like, Oh, I was doing so much cycling. I was doing so much running or so much weightlifting. Now it's kind of like, I do a little bit of everything, although I don't really cycle as much anymore, but usually I do like one long run a week. Mm -hmm. So lately it's been like a six mile run once a week. Um, if I can go out a second time, I might do a four mile run. Um, if my schedule allows it. Um, and then I will, other days I'll do like sprint training on like the treadmill. I'll do like sprint inter intervals. So like 30 seconds of like an all out sprint and then I'll like, you know, walk for 30 seconds and then do like different intervals. Sometimes I'll do 20 forties. I'll kind of vary what the interval is, but I have fun with that. I'm not a good sprinter. So it's really <laughs> challenging. I'm a really good distance runner. Um, but sprints are challenging. So I enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy that challenge a lot. Um, and then I'll, I'll do like rowing. I love that as a form of cardio as well. Um, and then I usually do 20, 30, 20 to 30 minutes of cardio followed up by like 45 minutes of like weight training. Um, and then I'll do like upper body days, lower body nice. days. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It sounds pretty balanced and that's a lot of, you know, that's, that's a lot of fitness. And so, um, do you find that, uh, because like when you work out that you have to consume more, um, food to, to, you know, to feel yourself and sustain, your, Absolutely. You know, yeah. Your body and that's afterwards. one thing too, when you're eating like, you know, vegan or fruit based, you do need a, you know, the amount of fruit that you're having, you need to eat more if you're, if you're active, um, because you have to fuel your muscles. I mean, granted, even if you're not eating, um, fruit based or vegan, you're still probably eating more as well. Um, but it's definitely a different mindset when it's fruit. So, you know, it's like after I work out, mm -hmm. I'll have three mm -hmm. to five bananas, maybe more kind of depends on the day. Um, and then, you know, some other fruits mm -hmm. along with that for, you know, for my muscles. And as I talk about in my book, all fruits contain amino acids and that's why we need proteins. Proteins are amino acids and all fruits have them. And, um, mm -hmm. bananas are amazing. Um, their profile for post-workout and even pre-workout, um, they're great. Um, and yeah, that's one thing that I was excited to put in my book is I broke down all the essential and all the non-essential amino acids. And I listed all the fruits that, that, that have that amino acid. And I listed them in the order from the ones that contain the most of that amino acid to the ones that contain the least. Um, so I think that's like a pretty helpful guide because like the more variety. Yes, awesome. I saw that. I, I love that. It's, it's like, you know, I can go back to it and I can say, okay, like I had this and this and, you know, like just, and just to kind of understand what exactly what I'm eating. Right? So good. Well, I'm glad I'm you found that helpful. Yeah. And what's cool is all of them except for one non-essential amino acid have plenty of fruits that contain it. Um, there was like one non-essential amino acid that you can only get in dates. Um, but like also dates have mm. other amino acids as well. So if you're eating dates, you're going to get more than just the one, but yeah. 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 And dates are, dates are amazing. So yeah, I, those that's like one of the, my staples as well as bananas right and like those are those are some pretty common you know plant-based yes. uh foods so it'll uh yeah it'll be you know it won't be too hard to to make yeah. sure that you're including that <laughs> but yeah no so also another thing that um i don't know if you if this was in your ebook mm -hmm. or if this was just a post that you maybe you shared but is it true that our bodies can assimilate our own protein? And so, yes, you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah I did. I did do share. a little like video post about that. And so, yeah, there's evidence that shows the more variety of fruits and vegetables a person eats, that is feeding our microbiome, all the good bacteria that live in our gut. And we have trillions of bacteria that live there. Although, sadly, nowadays, people's gut diversity. So the Basically, you want as many different good bacteria as you can in your gut. The more variety you have, the healthier of a gut you have, the stronger the immune system, all that good stuff. Unfortunately, because of people's diets, we don't have as much diversity in the bacteria in our gut. But people who eat plant-based diets or eat heavy fruits and vegetables, they do have a wide variety of this good bacteria. And the more variety of the bacteria that you have, these bacteria can produce proteins that our body needs if our body needs it. Um, and so that's also another argument that goes into why, you know, you don't need to worry about protein when you're plant-based is our bodies are, you know, very great at taking care of what they need to if they're just given the proper resources. So if you're eating a variety of fruits and vegetables, your body knows mm -hmm. what to do with that. And it can take the, <laughs> the nutrients from that and the bacteria in our gut will make proteins if our body needs it. And, you know, to even fill in the gaps if there is any gaps. So. 
Yeah, that's awesome. And so would you say that it would like take a while for, you know, maybe somebody that's not used to eating that way, like for their gut to kind of change and um, yes, it would. Yeah, just um, get used especially to it. too, like if you're eating high fat and if you're still eating um, eating lots of meat and things, doesn't mean you have to cut it out, but you would probably want to lower your mm -hmm. meat intake because you do. You would want eighty to ninety percent of your diet being those whole living foods, um, and there would be some lag time as your body's kind of flushing out excess fats. I mean, fats stay in our bloodstream for twenty four hours or more after we've eaten a high fat meal. So if you're someone who's coming off of eating a standard American diet filled with loss of fats, you know, it's going to take some time for your body to get rid of that out of the bloodstream and, and for everything in your gut to start resetting and rebuilding. Um, I like to use the like metaphor of mm -hmm. like your gut is like a garden and you know, you're going to plant all these amazing things in your garden and you want all of it to grow. And how is it all going to grow? You've got to water it. And so watering the bacteria in our gut is basically, mm -hmm. you know, the fruits and vegetables that we're eating. Mm -hmm. with the the prebiotics yep. that they contain okay yeah okay yeah that's awesome um so somebody's saying thanks for sharing information i have just started going vegan last week thursday for health issues and feeling great. so good and so much better today that's awesome um what is the best probiotic to take as a supplement so do, oh yeah i also wanted to ask you that do you take any supplements and um yeah and so i I do. I take supplements. A lot of my, like my personal supplement protocol is based on my Lyme disease, which I've been slowly dwindling away the supplements I've been taking because I don't need them anymore. But for me, a good, like what I would recommend is being like the top three or four supplements to take just that support immune health and stuff. And obviously if you want to do a probiotic, um, I'll address the probiotic first. So when buying a probiotic, the most important thing is you want to make sure that somewhere on the package it says it's shelf stable. If it does not say it's shelf stable, all the bacteria strains in that probiotic are dead and you're just buying something that has nothing. And I can't tell you how many like probiotic supplements out there are not shelf stable and you're spending a good amount of money on this supplement that's not going to help you. Um, so shelf stable. I believe in um, the link in my bio, if you go to my Amazon storefront, I have two probiotic supplements um, that I like there. Um, I can't think of the brands off the top of my head. Um, one's, yeah, just, <laughs> I forget. They're in there, yeah. Um, They're in there. <laughs> you need to do like a spore-based probiotic. Those typically, spore-based probiotics, those are the ones that live in our intestinal tract much, much longer. A lot of them have been in there since we were born. Um, and so sometimes after we take antibiotics, those, mm. those pre probiotics that have been there for years are then wiped out. So then if you've taken antibiotics, you want to take a spore-based probiotic. You don't have to take a spore-based probiotic daily. I usually mm -hmm. recommend that if you've been recently on a, on a bout of antibiotics. Um, but shelf-stable, that's what oh, you want okay. to look for when it comes to probiotics. Um, and then as far as other <laughs> supplements that I recommend, I do recommend taking zinc in the form of zinc sulfates. Most of us are zinc deficient, whether or not you eat meat or not. It's just very common. So zinc is a great one for immune support. Um, a good quality vitamin C. Ideally, you'd be getting your vitamin C from food sources, um, you know, fresh fruits. Um, you could even get it in the form of like amla berry powder, which is basically gooseberries, and then it's dried and ground, um, or kemu kemu powder. That's another great source of vitamin C. Um, again, you don't want vitamin C in the form of ascorbic acid. Um, like if you buy a capsule and it says it's ascorbic acid, that's made from genetically modified corn, and your body's not even going to absorb it, and more than likely, it's going to irritate your gut. Um, so vitamin vitamin C, zinc, and then, you know, B12 is one that can go either way. It's not going to hurt anything to take B12. If anything, it's going to help. Maybe you need it, maybe you don't. Um, B12 is really tough mm. because if you get a lab test, mm. um, it only measures the amount of B12 that's in our bloodstream, but it doesn't measure if our nervous system is absorbing that B12. So someone could have a lot of B12 in their bloodstream, but their nervous system's not absorbing it, so they actually are low in B12. Um, and this can go mm -hmm. for a, a meat eater and a non-meat eater. Um, even with animals, they're injecting them with B12 because they're B12 deficient. So you can just as easily become B12 deficient if you're eating meat versus if you're not. So with my clients, even if they eat meat, a lot of times I just suggest mm -hmm. taking a, a good quality B12. So. Okay, yeah. And then, um, yeah, so th those are, you know, those are kind of what I take as well. Um, I don't take any probiotics, but I've been looking into it. So maybe I'll check that out yeah, on your, on your sure. Amazon link. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, and then also when I, you know, I live in Canada, um, 
uh, Vancouver, BC. And, you know, like during the winter, it's not as, you know, the sun's not as not out as much or I'm not, you know, getting as much sunlight. Yes. And so vitamin D also, I like That's to a good one, yeah. take as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so like you don't take protein powder or and you don't consume any or like would you, would you say that you avoid it or you just don't, you know, like you just don't buy it in your diet, protein in your, powder? you know, in your groceries oh. to consume like soy or like, yeah, like protein powder or like other sources. Yeah, of, so I don't uh, plant-based plant protein. protein. Most of them, they just contain so many additives and it's just so tough. Um, sprouted living is a good one. If you are plant-based and you want a protein powder, sprouted living is pretty good. They're pumpkin seed protein powder. That one is also, you know, the absorption rate of that in our body is really well. It's, it's also not harsh on the digestive system. Sometimes pea protein powder can be harsh on digestion. Um, so if you, you know, if you are plant-based and you want a protein powder, you could do that. But I mean, you don't need to, I don't, um, and I don't really even go out of my way and eat over protein sources. Um, I personally don't eat soy because most of the soy grown is genetically modified and I try to avoid genetically modified foods. Um, and so even, you know, you could get organic soy, but it might still be genetically modified. Um, so yeah, for me personally, I just don't do any protein powders at all. Um, and I just, you know, again, make sure I eat enough. And, and that's also what I talk about a lot too in my book. Yeah. If you're eating enough on a day-to-day -day basis, you will not become protein deficient. It just does not happen. If you're not eating enough, then yes, you will be low in protein. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, yeah, no, like I've noticed that with myself as well. Like if I'm, especially if I'm working out, like, and, and then I don't eat enough or I don't even like, you know, I don't make time for myself because like, sometimes I, I intermittent fast and I don't eat until noon. And so sometimes I'll, you know, be doing work and then it'll slip my mind like, oh yeah, I should should have eaten more today. And so that is, yeah, that's definitely the case in the same with me. Like, and the only reason I'd say that where, where I'd ever, you know, where I wouldn't have enough food or yeah. feel like I didn't eat enough. Someone said um, I thought organic yeah. auto automatically meant um, non-GMO. So that, no, it does not mean that because you want to see that non-GMO label on something and it, and then at that point you, it could also be organic but you can get something that is non-organic and also mm -hmm. not gmo um like for me if something is genetically modified and it's organic i'm not going to buy it if it's not organic and it's not genetically modified i'll be like okay I'll, I'll buy it even though it's not organic but it's not genetically modified um and there is a difference between genetic modification mm -hmm. and hybridization i don't know if, if you knew this darlene um Okay, and, and that's yeah. something that a lot of yeah. times people will think like seedless watermelon is genetically modified. It's not. It's just a hybridization, and hybridization has been around for centuries. Mm -hmm. Farmers thousands of years ago used it, and you just graft two seeds together. Um, some people argue that it's not natural. It doesn't happen in nature, so you shouldn't eat it. The more variety of fruits we have gives unique antioxidant um, makeups. Basically, like every one of our fingerprints is unique to us, right? Each fruit has a unique fingerprint of its antioxidant compound. And the more variety of fruits we have, the more unique antioxidant compounds we get, which is better for us because it protects us from different diseases and things. So we want to get as many different antioxidant compounds as possible. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we've now made so many different types of fruits is a good thing for our health. Like blackberries, that's a hybrid fruit. Like most people don't even know that. So many fruits are mm -hmm. hybrids. You don't need to be afraid of that. Yeah. It's the genetic modification that you want to be afraid of. That involves chemicals. Hybridization, no chemicals. Yeah. Yeah, and aren't like mm -hmm. broccoli Those and are hybrid as well. Yeah. Also, so okay. most people yeah. don't realize how many hybrid fruits that they're eating yeah. on a daily basis. And then they'll say they're, oh, I'm not going to eat seedless watermelon because it's... <laughs> Obvi obviously seed yeah. is best if you can get seeded. But if you can't, that's okay. Most It's sometimes hard to find seeded, so. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay, wow, that's such a great understanding of, you know, what's going on and what, you know, yeah. what people can get confused with. And uh, yeah, um, somebody says that they throw in Moringa with meals sometimes. Um, what do you do you ever take any uh, superfood powders like spirulina or Moringa? Mm -hmm. And I, you mentioned yeah. Camu and that kind of stuff. And so do you ever uh, supplement with that kind of like superfood? Yeah, powders so if I make a smoothie, like I'll usually throw in amla berry powder. I like that one a lot. Also, what's cool about amla is it does support muscle tone, so I, I like that aspect of it. Um, and then I'll do in spirulina or I'll do barley grass um, as well. I like 
I like both of those. I'll switch it up between because when I put them both in a smoothie, they kind of take over the flavor. And I'm like, I don't want this to taste so much like that. Yeah. So I'll usually like one day do spirit, you know, <laughs> one day do barley grass. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, that's awesome. And so let's see if I have any other questions. It seems like you've had like such a, you know, such a wide range of like experience through this journey because, um, you know, like I, and also a lot of knowledge too, like something that I, I learned in, the, in my journey with this lifestyle is that like, you know, I, at first it was kind of like a weight loss thing. Cause I, I learned, you know, like I, um, the way I was introduced to it was that my brother had lost a lot of weight going fruit based. And, um, and so when I was younger, it was probably around 13. And that's how I was inspired. And like, oh, this is awesome. And then, and, and then things just sort of started to click. And, and then I started to experience certain, you know, like my, my eczema and, um, and then I would bloat and have lots of period pain, or like headaches and things like that. And I noticed that this diet really helped with, um, you know, with, yeah. with get, freeing myself of all of that and uh yeah and then and then I also had to you know kind of take a seat from working out and allow my body to yeah. uh detox and to like you know re-nourish itself and then uh and then from that place after you know giving my body what it needed and also getting rid of what it doesn't need um was I able to okay now you know, let's do some fitness, let's grow instead of, you know, being kind of held down by yeah. what was in the way. So yeah, I really like your story. Like it, it you know, I, I feel like yeah, we went, both went through kind of well, similar and that's awesome too, journeys. Well, awesome too, introduced <laughs> to it at such a young age. I think that's, that's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's actually, um, oh. Uh, Ted Carr, he lived down my street and he was selling fruit boxes That's in, out of his garage. Oh gosh, I love that. <laughs> and, yeah. <How> cool. <laughs> so, so yeah, no, I'm really grateful for, for all the things that I, that, you know, I came across at a young age and allowed yeah. to implement. But yeah, um, is there anything else that you'd like to share? Um, you know, uh, maybe actually, is there anything in the bundle that you, you know, that you saw that we were, you were excited about? Uh, I was looking forward, forward to, to seeing and, Raw Food Romance, her enjoy. wraps. Like, I was very excited about that. Um, <laughs> and I, like, I've been exploring wraps really in the, like, last six months and, like, playing around with, like, my own. And, like, I, I didn't really dedicate that much time to figuring it out. So it was kind of nice that someone else did. And then I was like, okay, cool. So now I can just get the recipes. Um, and like, I was out of town over the yeah. weekend. And so I shared on my story that for me, wraps are a great thing to travel because I can make a bunch of wraps and pack them with me and then just go to the store and get like stuff to fill it. And then that's an easy thing to make when you don't have a kitchen. So, um, I'm excited about the wraps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited for that too, actually, because I love wraps oh. and oh, okay. I've never tried yeah. making raw wraps ever. So, so that yeah. sounds so delicious <laughs> um have you so you haven't tried making them yet then okay no 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 not yet but okay. i so i don't have a dehydrator but i have like, oh, my, cool. i have a dehydrator okay. setting in on my oven so hopefully hopefully it'll oh. work i've made like awesome. dehydrated mushrooms and um and other other things That's in cool. it so you, hopefully my that clients have told me well. they have an oven with a dehydrator <laughs> setting and I'm like this sounds amazing because then you don't need like a, another appliance yeah so. it it is like it, oh, it makes okay. the kitchen really hot and like it kind of seems like a you know yeah. a lot to keep it on for hours <laughs> but I think that's exactly. probably why I haven't really made much with it. But then I, you know, and then I forgot. I was like, oh, yeah, I could totally do this with my oven. So oh, I'm oh, definitely going to cool. try the wraps with yeah. that. <laughs> um, so if anybody else has any questions before we say. I saw someone 
someone mentioned Goodbye. something, it, it kind of went fast, um, but they were asking about like nuts and seeds. If I, I, I don't know, they, maybe they were asked if we ate that um, and that they, they do a lot of that because they don't feel satiated. So like maybe, and maybe you, you want to start mm. talking about, mm. I don't like, I don't know how many nuts and seeds you do. I don't, you know, if you want to answer first and I can share my opinion on it. Yeah. Well, I th I'd say, I don't know if like, this is something that I like very, very personalized to me is that like, I don't consume too, uh, too many nuts that have um, a high amount of arginine in it because I okay. am susceptible to cold sores. So, um, so usually I avoid like walnuts and things like that. But I do consume like nut butters and, um, and like, like peanut butter and stuff uh, here and there. But, you know, I notice that, or I make my own cashew cheese sometimes, but I do notice that if I'm, you know, if it's a, a big part of my diet and I'm mostly consuming that, that I don't feel my best. And I, I try to, I try to keep the, the, the fats like to a minimum. Um, yeah, just to feel, just to feel my best. So that's kind of just where, yeah. you know. Yeah, so I personally me. don't do any nuts or seeds. Like I don't just willingly grab a handful and eat. I will consume nuts if it's in some type of sauce that I make. And so normally I'm getting maybe a small fraction of the nuts if the recipe calls for like a half a cup or something. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, I don't even make sauces with nuts in them very often because I am very particular. Um, you know, most nuts are pretty dehydrating the way they're processed when they're picked from the tree. And that's why if you're going to make them in a recipe, you have to soak them to rehydrate them so that you can use that. So I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't rely on nuts and seeds. Uh, I don't do nut butters. I used to love nut butters, but I just was like, you know, I can cut them out. And I will say it is hard in, mm -hmm. for a while when you rely on nuts and seeds as you know, a way to satiate. And I see this with clients a lot is it's like, okay, well, I cut that out. But now I'm still hungry. Like I'm craving that fats or those fats. It just takes time. You just got to continue to like consistently yeah. eat fruits or vegetables. And eventually your body will be like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, we're full. We filled up on enough. And maybe you have to increase your consumption of fruits and vegetables for a while until your body realizes like, okay, yeah, we're going to rely on glucose, which is our preferred fuel source anyway, instead of doing nuts and seeds. Plus nuts and seeds take so much energy to digest and break down for just a little bit of nutrients. So it's like, you're not really getting a lot of bang for your buck when you're eating nuts yeah. and seeds, so. Okay, yeah. No, I, I definitely notice that, right? And so every, whenever I do consume nuts and seeds, like I, I just end up not having it for like another month and then like I'll have so much more. I'm yes. like, oh yeah, I yeah. want this yeah. right now. I feel that. Because I will, I'll have like a sauce one week and I'll have had mm -hmm. that few nights for dinner that had nuts in it. And then the next week I'm like, okay, yeah, I kind of had my fix on that. I'm good. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday I had a, um, like, uh, okay. like summer salad rolls in a, in like a rice paper. And I had that in a peanut sauce that I made, but it was like really, really was still really thick. Yeah. And so but, like, it's good it was a lot. It's almost like more of a treat <laughs> and like you kind of do that for some meals versus it being yeah. something that's like a pillar of your diet. Or, or something. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It's more of like an in indulgent and like a here, there, here and there kind of thing rather than a, you know, like, yeah, it's, I consume exactly. it every day all the time. Um, so I do don't. You I mean, I'm familiar with it, um, but I don't. I don't know about you. Okay, I tried. I bought some this year actually, and I started trying it because somebody said mm -hmm. it helps with, um, you know, with iron. Uh, and so, like, I actually, when I first, um, I was first vegetarian before okay. I w went vegan. But at that time, okay. I was like such an unhealthy vegetarian, eating like okay. cheese and like cakes and that kind of stuff. Like it was like bread oh, yeah. and cheese and you know and and eggs and. And yeah, and so um, uh, my mom, she's like really anemic. And so uh, she took me to the doctor to check uh, if I was too. And so okay. at that time I was, I'm not anymore, but um, it, you know, just uh, apparently her hemoglobin levels are like are really low. And um, and so so I, I just started try trying Strelogy out to see if that would, you know, do anything. I, I found that it, like I, I feel, I feel like it helps with just getting minerals um on you know and uh i don't feel like a, 
uh, I need okay, to take yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, it's just something, as far as like iron goes, I've, I've not had an issue with iron, but I know a lot of people do. Um, butter lettuce is a great source of iron. It contains more iron than spinach. So if, yeah, if anyone's ever looking for a good source of iron, mm. butter lettuce, mm. also the skin of potatoes. If you're someone who eats potatoes, white potatoes, the skin of white potatoes contains iron as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that about butter great lettuce. Course. I, uh, yeah. yeah, I should, okay, I well, eat a lot great. of spinach, but. There you Maybe go. I'll have yeah, some more butter like, you, you only want so much spinach because it can be like bitter, and at least butter lettuce yeah. is mild. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So Sheila Jeet, somebody's asking what Sheila Jeet is. It's um, basically, it's it's taken from. I have it right here. It's taken from uh, it's like specific mountains, but it's basically like compost, like the like through years of it being you know kind of like yeah it has to do with like the friction <laughs> ground it up uh, but, <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um but yeah it's basically like compost it's like it's like a tar i'll show you this is the brand that i have but it i you know it doesn't taste good and you know i'm a big believer on eating things that like you know that you are attracted to eating but i know that it has a, a bunch of uh, minerals and so I take it. Which is great. Like, yeah. Again, I've heard nothing but great things about it. So I just, it's one of those things. I've had to take so many yeah. other supplements for different things. I was like, okay, I don't need it. I can't add anything else. So maybe once I've dwindled away my lime stuff, I could, <laughs> I, that would be something I'd add in. So. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'll definitely be consuming more Perfect. butter lettuce. My boyfriend loves great. butter lettuce. So. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, Taylor. Like this, you shared so much value and I really had a good time connecting with you. Um, so I didn't really mention if you guys don't know about the Raw Vegan Bundle. Um, it's only available until May 11th. So if you are interested in getting it, we both have eBooks in it. And um, as well as, you know, there's a total of 40, I think maybe a little bit more uh, eBooks in it with a bunch of recipes. It's not only recipes, there's guides, there's um, there's courses, plans, so, so many things that, and, uh, yeah, and it's, and it's only $50 and only available once a year. Uh, so yeah, if you want to check it out, you can find the, the link in either of our bios and, um, yeah, so you'll, get, you'll get to see, oh yeah, you, what is How your book called? Your best on a low <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah, it's honestly it was the first book that I opened yeah. up because I was like, yeah, I want to know about this. So, so that yeah, was, the bundle yeah, is I love it's it. super super cool just to get like all the stuff because it's hard to keep up with different creators like all the stuff that they're like making and releasing. So this is a great way to just like purchase one thing and you get all of the great stuff. Yeah, and get it all. Yeah, yeah, and it, and really it's from from people that have experienced and gone through their own journeys as well and are sharing, you know, what they've learned over years of trial and error and uh yeah, giving you their best tips and the best, you know, recipes. Yeah, so Yeah, it is neat to, yeah. to see everyone's <laughs> awesome. perspective from their from their own journey. It's a, it's very cool. So. Mhm. Mm Thank you. And um, no, that was, yeah, is there anything but it was else great you to share? connect. So thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, you too. Okay, well, I'll, um, I'll add you as a collaborator. I'm here as well. And, All right, well, enjoy the rest uh, of your day. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good rest Bye. of your day.